Union Pacific, a 1939 film, is a classic piece of cinema that takes you back to the days of the first transcontinental railroad. Directed by Cecil B. DeMille, the movie revolves around the challenges faced during the construction of the railroad. Now, here's the hook, stay tuned, because there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts about this film that you won't want to miss. Ever wondered about the lesser known anecdotes behind the scenes? Were there any surprising incidents that caught your attention? Perhaps DeMille's unique directing style or the cast off screen camaraderie? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your insights. As you reminisce about Union Pacific, what cherished memories or personal experiences come to mind? Maybe a family movie night or an unexpected twist that left you in awe. Your stories are the heart of this cinematic journey, so don't hesitate to share them with us. So, grab your popcorn and settle in for a trip down memory lane with Union Pacific. Remember, there's more to this film than meets the eye funny, shocking, and sad facts await. Let us know your thoughts and memories in the comments. Happy watching. Released in 1939, a notable movie captured the essence of a transformative era in American history. Following the construction of the first transcontinental railroad, it immersed audiences in a tale of ambition, conflict, and progress. The story's enduring appeal lies in its depiction of how the railroad united the nation, bridging the gap between the East and West Coasts. Through its portrayal of rivalries between railroad companies and clashes with Native American tribes, the movie sheds light on the challenges of the time. Despite its age, the themes of striving for success and overcoming obstacles remain as relevant as ever, captivating viewers with its timeless lessons on human nature and historical events. Its narrative continues to captivate audiences, offering insights into the past and inspiring reflection on the journey of progress. The railroad depicted in the movie is still operational today and ranks second in the U.S. in terms of size. Founded in 1862, it operates over 8,000 locomotives on more than 32,000 miles of track in the West and Midwest. The other two railroads involved in the Transcontinental Railroad project later merged with it. Most of the antique railroad equipment used in the film was acquired from the Virginia and Truckee Railroad in Nevada. It was later sold off when Western films fell out of favor, with much of it now preserved at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Sasso B. DeMille claimed to have discovered Robert Preston, who appeared in the movie, while Preston worked as a parking valet at a racetrack, but Preston had already been in several movies before this one. Monty Blue, raised in an orphanage with one of his brothers, had a father who served in the Union Army during the Civil War. His father's death in an automobile accident left their mother struggling to raise four children alone. Joel McCrea's character in the film is inspired by Charles H. Sherman, a civil engineer who played a significant role in building the Union Pacific Railroad. Sherman's journal served as the basis for Ernest Haycox's story, which in turn became the foundation for the movie's plot. Robert Preston, known for his roles in Sassel B. DeMille Productions, held a strong dislike for the director personally and found him lacking in directing skills, particularly with actors. The scene featuring Preston, Barbara Stanwyck, and Joel McCrea trapped in a boxcar took a considerable two weeks to film. Preston criticized DeMille's directorial approach, noting the director's focus on action and spectacle over character-driven scenes. Despite offers, Preston declined further roles in DeMille's films and avoided any further interaction with him. Lon Chaney Jr. and Joel McCrea, two actors in the film, shared a high school background. Director Sassel B. DeMille orchestrated the casting of Barbara Stanwyck in a pivotal role after initial choices, Claudette Colbert and Vivian Lee declined. DeMille was particularly impressed by Stanwyck's talent and professionalism, earning her the title of his all-time favorite actress. The film also clinched the inaugural Palme d'Or Award, a prestigious honor in cinema. Notably, DeMille spared no expense, constructing six miles of track and amassing an extensive collection of railroad cars and locomotives, establishing the largest private railway of its time. The gold spike used at the ceremony to mark the end of the construction was the same spike actually used in the event on loan from Stanford University. The film's opening titles shown moving down a rolling railroad track later inspired title designer Dan Perry when he created the title sequences for both Star Wars and The Warriors. According to a news item in The Hollywood Reporter, Sasso B. DeMille directed much of the film from a stretcher because of an operation he had months earlier. However, studio records indicate he collapsed from the strain of directing three units simultaneously and used a stretcher for about two weeks. The production of the film involved renting local pinto horses for the Indian attack scenes, 
but the noise and commotion on set caused the horses to become agitated, requiring local cowboys to round them up. Barbara Stanwyck and Joel McCrea starred in this movie, marking their fourth collaboration together. The world premiere in Omaha Nee was a massive event, doubling the city's population and necessitating the National Guard's presence to maintain order. President Franklin D. Roosevelt remotely initiated the premiere from Washington, D.C., while the stars and Cecil B. DeMille traveled to Omaha by special train, stopping along the way to greet large crowds. The premiere included parades, radio broadcasts, and banquets, making it the largest in motion picture history. Following the premiere, an antique train embarked on a 15-day promotional tour across the country, stopping in 30 cities along the way. To facilitate the numerous train scenes in the film, Paramount obtained a railroad operating license from the Interstate Commerce Commission. Barbara Stanwyck, who later starred in Double Indemnity, appeared in the film. She also starred in another notable film, which won the Palmy Door at the Cannes Film Festival. In a scene, Dick Allen asks about Rule G, a reference to one of the 12 rules established by the Association of American Railroads, which prohibits the use of intoxicants or narcotics. This rule is essential to maintaining safety and order in railroad operations. In a remarkable feat of history, a replica of Cheyenne, Wyoming was meticulously built in Iron Springs, Utah. The ceremony for the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad was quite something. Instead of just hammering a gold spike, there was a special process involved. The gold spike was carefully placed into a hole drilled into a specially prepared tie. After the ceremony, the gold spike was taken out to keep its significance intact. Then, an iron spike was firmly driven into the tie to mark the project's completion. This moment was significant because it showed human determination and teamwork at its best. Additionally, this event marked the final appearance of Ida May in films, which added a touching element to the occasion. Her role might not be well known, but it surely left a strong impression on those who admired her talent and hard work. In history, the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad remains a powerful example of what people can achieve when they work together. It's a story of people with big dreams and those who worked hard to make them a reality. The golden spike symbolizes unity and the endless possibilities when people come together for a common goal. This story, told through various mediums like film and literature, continues to inspire people across generations. It's a reminder of the incredible things humanity can achieve when we put our minds to it.